Hey, it's Mitchell from Cherry Audio, and today I'm going to talk to you about the FM station digital oscillator module for Voltage Modular, as well as the EG station module, which is an 8 ADSR envelope generator intended to be used with FM station. Now, if you're familiar with the Yamaha DX synths and FM synthesis in general, you probably know that it gets a bad rap for being kind of difficult to program. But most of the difficulty in the original Yamaha synths had more to do with the minimal user interface than the actual synthesis method itself. Itself. In that era of synthesis, manufacturers were looking to cut costs, so they made a switch from synths that had a bunch of knobs and switches for every function, like uh, like that big pile analog synth behind me, <laughs> to uh, an interface that was more streamlined where there would be one slider and up-down buttons and then a bunch of buttons to select which parameter and a tiny LCD display and confusion abound. And this was made even worse because the DX synths had a whole lot of parameters and a synthesis method that most people weren't familiar with. So with all this in mind, we set out to make FM station as easy to use as possible. The interface makes it really easy to visualize the audio and modulation signal flow. And we carefully chose the parameter set for maximum tonal options without a zillion superfluous controls. Now, one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, you often need a lot of envelope generators to use FM synths optimally. So we contemplated building the envelope generators into the FM station module, but because we figured you'd need a bunch of them, we would have had to either put them behind tabs or menus or make an all-around giant module, which we didn't want to do. So we came to the conclusion the best thing to do was to make this separate EG station module that has eight envelope generators. And each one of these has independent controls, and it has a normal velocity CV in, which is really useful. And it sits in a cabinet directly beneath FM station really nicely and everything lines up and you'll see in the video how well that works. So before I dive into the modules themselves, let's do a little primer on FM synthesis. I'm not gonna go into super great detail, but we'll explain enough so you can get a feel for FM synthesis if you're new to it. <music> In its most basic form, FM synthesis is pretty much just taking a sine wave oscillator and modulating its pitch with another sine wave oscillator. So what we have here is a two oscillator patch, really simple, really basic. This oscillator is disabled right now. And if I play the keyboard, we're just hearing this sine wave right here. And the sine wave from this oscillator isn't feeding an audio output, it's feeding the frequency modulation input on the first oscillator. So if I have this set to low frequency mode and I turn up the frequency mod input on the second oscillator, we get vibrato. But if I turn up the speed, it no longer sounds like it's a vibrato, it just changes the sound of the other oscillator altogether. And if I change the depth of the modulation, we have the basis of FM synthesis. This would be referred to in FM synthesis terminology as a two-operator synthesizer. So what does that mean? Well, an operator in FM synthesis refers to an oscillator, because FM synths generally have four or six or sometimes eight oscillators that are arranged in different ways. This would be the most basic way of arranging the two operators. The carrier, and the carrier is the thing that's making sound, and you'd have the modulator over here, which is modulating the oscillator making sound. There are a few other FM synthesis concepts I want to touch on real quickly. First, I want to talk about linear modulation versus exponential. Now, the function of frequency and how it relates to octaves in Western music is an exponential function. What does that mean? Let's say I play a note and it's 100 hertz. It's not really, but it's not important for example. And I play an octave higher. That will be 200 hertz. And if I play an octave higher than that, it's 400 hertz. So, this doubling of frequency every time is an exponential function. So in other words, to play octaves, the frequency must double every time. 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 400 hertz, 800 hertz, 1600 hertz, and so forth. So let's take our 100 hertz note and add some vibrato to it. Let's say, for example, I add an octave of vibrato. When the wave swoops down, it goes down to 50 hertz, and it goes up to 200 hertz. So you can see that it's a lot less that it's going down than it's going up. But because of the way pitch and frequency works, it has to only go down 50 hertz to go down an octave, and it goes up 100 hertz to get up an octave. 
Now, in the case of FM synthesis, that doesn't work very well because once we get up into these audio rates, it doesn't play in tune very well. Instead, we're going to use linear modulation. And linear means that if I have an LFO going up and down in linear mode, it's going to go up and down the exact same amount of hertz. So if I use the exact same vibrato setting with my LFO, that means the frequency would start at 100 hertz, it would go up to 200 hertz, back down to 100, and all the way down to zero because it would subtract 100 or add 100 either way. Now this works really badly for vibrato because it means that the pitch of your vibrato is going to be really lopsided because it's going to go down more than it's going to go up. But this linear modulation is exactly what you want if you're doing FM synthesis where you're using audio range frequencies to modulate an oscillator for tone changes. This is the FM station module. Conceptually, it could be thought of as four oscillators and four voltage controlled amplifiers. Each one of these colored sections is an oscillator. And in FM terminology, oscillators are referred to as operators. And that's what this OP stands for here. Operator one, operator two, operator three, operator four. As we discussed earlier, the operators can be audio sources or they can be modulators. In FM terminology, oscillators configured to make sound are called carriers, and oscillators that modify the tone color of carriers are called modulators. So with that in mind, across the top here, we have what are called algorithms. And algorithm is just a fancy word for the arrangement of the operators. So these diagrams up here, which are actually switches, describe the current arrangement of the operators. The boxes at the bottom are always the audio source, and the boxes above them are the modulators, which are modulating the audio source. So for example, in algorithm number one, number one is the audio source, and it comes out of the mix over here. And operators two, three, and four are modulating operator number one. If I were to go to algorithm five, operator number one and number three are audio sources, and two modulates one, and four modulates three. So the eight algorithm buttons up here select the arrangement of the oscillators or operators. The important thing to remember is that the boxes on the bottom are always the audio sources or carriers, and the ones on top are always the modulators. Also notice that when the algorithm buttons are selected, the labels right here change to display whether the operator is currently a carrier or a modulator. So for example, if I change to algorithm number eight where all of the operators are audio sources, you'll see that all these say carrier now. We also made the amplitude bars change colors to indicate whether an operator is a carrier or a modulator. Red for a carrier, and green for a modulator. So I'm going to raise the amplitude of the first operator over here. And we can adjust its pitch over here with the ratio bar. And as you can hear, the pitches snap to the even harmonic series. This is really important so that the operators interact properly and play in tune for FM synthesis. This stepping through the harmonic series is the default behavior of the operators, but this button right here that says ratio, if you click on it, it will go to frequency, and with that toggled, you can freely move through the audio spectrum from 1 to 12,000 hertz. This is typically useful for special effects or with one of the modulation oscillators. So looking at our algorithm over here, we can see that operator number two is not an audio source. And that's because in this algorithm, its output isn't routed to the master mix output. It's routed to operator number one. So let's bring up operator number one again. And now I'm gonna bring up the amplitude of operator two. And you can hear that it modulates operator number one, or carrier number one. And it pretty radically alters its tone. This is also affected by the pitch. So if I change the pitch of operator two, we can get all kinds of tones. For all intents and purposes, you could think of the algorithm buttons as preset routings for all the carry outputs back into the modulation inputs. In fact, if you look at algorithm eight, you can see that this has no modulation routings and these all go straight to the output. So using algorithm eight, you could essentially reproduce any of the first seven algorithm routings by routing the individual operator outputs back into modulator inputs. So you might be wondering why we have these stacks of three modulators going to one carrier. Well, let me show you why. 
Stacking multiple modulators can give you much more elaborate modulation, which in turn makes for more elaborate tones. I'm going to bring this up. Now operator 3 is going to modulate operator 2. So as you can hear, there are many tone colors to be explored, and in this particular algorithm, I haven't even brought in operator 4, which makes things even more complex. The original DX synthesizer operators were sine wave only, but later models added more waveforms for additional tonal flexibility, and we've incorporated that into FM Station. If you click over here, you can cycle through eight different waveforms. You'll also notice that up here in the corner, we have a diagram of all the waveforms. These aren't buttons or controls, but they are a nice graphic indicator of all the waveforms, so you don't have to go swooping through all of them to see them. So let's listen to what some of these waveforms sound like. We'll begin with the basic sine wave, and then we'll cycle through all these waves over here. Remember that in addition to being sound sources, the waves can also be used as mod sources. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to have operator 2 modulate operator 1. I'm going to leave operator 1 on a sine wave, but I'm going to cycle through the waves on operator 2. So that's with a sine wave, and now let's start changing waves. You might have noticed that operator 4 has an extra parameter that the others don't, and that's this feedback bar over here. You can see this represented in the algorithm diagrams, which is up here. That's this little loop up here, and it's present on operator 4 in all of them. So what does it do? It essentially connects operator 4's output directly back to its input and lets you vary the amount. This feedback distorts its waveform into new shapes and allows more sounds and more modulation capabilities. Let's have a listen. Here's our standard sine wave, and if I bring up the feedback, it sounds a lot like a conventional sawtooth wave. If I keep going, it starts getting a little glitchy, and then a lot glitchy. Now of course feedback isn't limited to just sine waves. I can also switch waveforms. And make all kinds of new shapes. And of course this is voltage modular, so you're free to modulate. Operator 4 waves that are modulated with feedback are also useful for modulation purposes. Here I've chosen algorithm 6, where 4 is just a modulation source for the other operators. So I'm going to bring up 3, and we'll bring up the mod amount. And now I'm going to mess with the feedback. Rounding out FM Station's controls are a few more standard pitch controls. We have a range control over here, which globally shifts the entire thing. And this frequency mod CV input here is a standard exponential global CV pitch control. In other words, this is what you'd use for adding vibrato to the entire thing. If I take a mini LFO over here, we get vibrato. So up to this point, we've been using FM Station by just pulling up the amplitude bars, but obviously you can't really play it this way. So let's hook up a pitch CV, and now let's hook up an envelope generator. I'm going to put a gate to the gate in, and the envelope generator is going to go to operator number one's amplitude CV in. And I'm going to turn this up all the way. And now when I play a key, we're getting just a solid on-off envelope. And you can see there's this little hollow rectangle here, and this guy indicates incoming CVs. So if I turn down the CV amount, the rectangle gets smaller, or if I set a negative amount, the rectangle goes below the middle line. So now we can play it like a very boring sine wave oscillator. But let's bring in some modulation from operator number two. And adjust our amplitude. 
and now we have something that's making some music. Now when I hold down a key, I get a static tone, but it would be nice if that could move over time. So let's create another envelope generator, and let's route its output to operator 2's amplitude CV input. Now I'm going to turn its bass level all the way down, and now its amplitude is being completely controlled by the envelope generator. And I can change the tone in a number of ways. I can change the tuning over here. And you can hear that just with this very simple two operator setup, I can get a lot of tonalities. I could also modulate the fine tuning. So once you start making patches using all the operators, you can see that you need a lot of envelope generators. So rather than using a bunch of these single envelope generators, that's where the EG Station module comes in. This is EG Station. It has eight identical envelope generators with control bars very similar to the FM Station module. Each one of them has a gate input, a velocity input, which allows you to control the intensity of the envelope with velocity, and a standard output. One unique and really handy feature of VG Station is that the gate and velocity inputs are normalized. So what that means is you won't have to hook up a cable from gate to gate or velocity to velocity. If I hit a key on the keyboard right now, you can see it registering on the oscilloscope because of that normalized connection. But because these are semi-normal, you can always override the normal I.O. panel connections by plugging in a jack from any other source in voltage. And because EG Station was designed to sit directly beneath FM Station, the cable normalization is really nice because you don't end up with a ton of cables running over the front of everything. In addition to the standard mono FM Station and EG Station modules, we have full poly versions as well. And like any other poly module in Voltage, these can be up to 16 voices. And if you look closely at them, they're functionally identical. The only difference is there are poly jacks for all the inputs and outputs, with the exception of the Global Frequency Mod CVN. 